Hey guys, Will here with Into Mobile. Take a look at what we got here. This is the Motorola Zoom, as you can see by the back here for Verizon. Um, a little dark in here because I didn't want the glare to affect the software overview. Um, quick little, quick little hardware tour. Um, we've already taken a hardware tour of this guy, but this is the Motorola Zoom with the 10.1 inch display here. We've got the 5 megapixel camera in the back with the dual LED flash right there, and of course the power button on the back side with the stereo speakers, one here and one right there as you can see. And of course on the front we've got the front facing camera right there, you can't really see it. But enough of the hardware stuff, we all, we've already taken a look at the hardware, let's take a look at the software and by that I mean Android 3.0 Honeycomb. Bam, right here, this is it. This is the tablet optimized version of Android called Honeycomb, codename Honeycomb. Um, we love the name, we love how it works even better. It's not quite polished but I'll show you what I mean um, by uh, the good and the bad here. Um, so, taking a look at the home screen, right? Just as with as we've come to expect from Android, you get side swiping home screens, you get multiple panes. Panning over to the left, you get uh, a couple cool things. You have um, you have your Gmail, you have your Gmail app, right? I'm just gonna have that configure. I'm gonna configure that to my that email, and um, so you get a whole bunch of widgets, right? So on the left side, you have your Gmail widget. Cool, you get you get to read all your Gmails, and it scrolls. Look at that. You'll notice that um, a lot of these widgets are interactive, and they they take they take advantage of the uh, larger screen size of the, of the tablet. Um, um, for instance, like the YouTube widget, right here, you can actually flick through. That's scrollable. You flick through all the popular YouTube videos for today. That's actually pretty cool. Totally interactive. Also, you got the uh, the bookmarks uh, widget right here for web bookmarks. Um, so, and basically, I noticed that every time I uh, swipe to a different pane on the edge, you get a little bit of this fall out, fall off uh, outline, uh, letting you know that there's a, there's more content to the left or to the right of the screen. That's actually a recurring theme throughout the UI, a recurring aesthetic. So keep an eye on that. Keep in, keep that in mind. Um, so here's the home screen. You got the clock right here. You got your apps right here. What's different though is that you won't find any hardware navigation buttons. All the navigation buttons are right here in the lower left hand corner right here. So, let's say I'm at a different home screen, I just go down here and I'm going to tap on home, bam, and it takes me back to the center. Or, let's say I'm in the browser, I'm at CNN, and I want to go home, bam, I just hit that, that home button and I'm there. Or, in the browser, whoops, let me pull the browser back up, I can navigate within the browser, notice that I have full navigation buttons in the browser, we have back, forward, stop, we got reload, star, search, um, all that good stuff here. But I can also go forward before you, we didn't really have the forward button. But also I can use this same navigation button down here to go backwards. And if I'm already at the, the uppermost part uh, level on my browser and I hit back, it's going to take me to, my, uh, well, it's actually going to take me to, to my previous my previous page, right? It's just going to keep on working as navigation. And if I want to go home, I'm just going to hit that like so. And if I'm in the browser or wherever I am, the home screen, the browser, whatever, and I want to check out and want to switch between tasks, I can switch between all these different tasks. I got, I was previously running Dungeon, Dungeon Defenders, Angry Birds, my settings, Gmail, and books. I can, I can minimize that by hitting that, or I could switch between apps. Let's see, I want to go to the settings. Okay, well, I want to check out my screen settings. Okay, I'm done with that. Let's see, I want to go to Gmail real quick. I'm going to go there. Okay, I'm done with mail. I want to go to Angry Birds, and it's going to pick up. Oh, well, it kicked out. Um, it's been a while since I ran the game. But notice also that this app, because it's not made for honeycomb, it does run well. The graphics look great on this big screen, but you do get this little uh, menu legacy button down here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, yeah, yeah, you can. This little menu button down here gives you the traditional, what used to be uh, triggered by the menu hardware button. Um, it's this is kind of a uh, legacy. Uh, this is kind of a little uh, leftover, leftover legacy piece from uh, other versions of Android, um, and it kind of muddles the UI experience in Honeycomb because you you know you're supposed to be getting away from no heart no no menu button. Everything is kind of um, based around this uh, action bar up here where you get contextualized actions, and uh, but the menu bar does confuse things a little bit. Or yeah, you know, I can use the the context. The uh, multitask switcher to switch there, um, do whatever. And if I want my apps, it's in the top right corner. I just scroll through my apps, and notice on the edge we have more icons along this edge. These are outlines of icons that are 
off to the side here. So it's letting me know, oh, I have I still have content to the left of the screen, I still have content to the right of the screen, I'm just going to go like that. And my apps are divided into my apps, which I downloaded, of course, and all apps that come downloaded or it's already installed on the tablet, what, what have you. And you can go directly from your my apps to Android Market, which actually just updated for me. It's a, 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 So you should get the full, yeah, the full interactive version of the Android market here. This banner was missing previously. Um, the market just updated to give that. So very full featured Android market here. I'm gonna dig down into an app to show you the descriptions. Very cool, very rich, right? If And we, we can pan through all different kinds of uh, photos and if there was a video, they could in, even embed video here. Very cool stuff. Um, to go back to your previous screen, I could tap like that on this l upper left-hand corner. That's actually kind of a recurring theme as well. This will take you to the back, to the to the previous screen in, in whatever app you happen to be in. Or you can use this navigation button down here to go backwards. And also notice that Android Market is divided into, oops, Android Market is divided into books, your book market, or Android apps, right? And they have the same look and feel. It's just that the same layout. It's just that here you have all your books, right, in different categories. And here you have all your apps featured and whatnot and different categories over here. And you can even go to My Apps to take a look at which apps you already have installed, you've already downloaded, and then you can modify them here. You can see details, open them, update them, uninstall updates. You know, you can you can even install stuff that you've previously uh, purchased but didn't install yet. So all good stuff there. And again, if I want to multitask switch, I want to go back to settings. I'm just going to hit this multitask button real quick and just uh, hop around at will, willy-nilly, as it were. Good stuff, right? So let's talk about the context aware um, action bar, which is actually right up here. Notice that um, you don't have a menu button anywhere, right? You do have these navigation buttons right here for back home and multitask, but you don't have any other navigation buttons. This, sorry, um, this up here, the very, very top row is dedicated to context aware actions. And here you have a list of stuff, new tab, new incognito tab, bind on page, uh, download settings, all the good stuff. Um, before I move on, I want to show you new incognito tab is a cool new feature. You can uh, you can open a new tab, and that tab is immune from your browsing history, cookie tracking, all kinds of. Uh, it's basically a privacy mode, so you can watch your porn or whatever, right? Probably porn. Come on now, um, in full privacy. And then when you close this tab, there's no history of you. I don't know, looking at um, let's say kittens and. Gossip Girl. So uh, let me give you another example of the context aware um, bar up here. Notice that on the home screen you don't get the context aware action bar. The action bar turns into your apps icon and also your home screen customizer, which is where you go to add widgets to your home screen. So let's say I want to add I want to add a, a widget. Let's say I want to add the calendar widget. Calendar widget's right here. I'm just going to take this guy and drag him. Whoops. I'm just going to take this guy. I'm going to drag him to whatever home screen pane I like. Let's see, I want to drag him here on this home screen? No, I want to go onto this home screen pane. And then I'm going to put him right there. Awesome. And let's see, I want to add an app, an app shortcut to Angry Birds. I'm going to take that. I'm going to add him to this pane right here, and I'm going to place him right there. OK, and you can change wallpapers like so. You can customize wallpapers for each pane, and you can do more stuff like add these kinds of stuff. So that's the home screen customizer. Um, like I said, this that this is uh, this home screen customizer and the apps tray actually replace the action bar when uh, you're on the home screen. But when you're in an app, let's say like the gallery, notice again that the, it changed. In the browser, we only had this context-aware menu. Now, this context-aware menu is uh, more limited now because we're in a different app, but notice there are new icons. So you can list all your actions in this menu right here or call out often frequently used actions with individual icons, like we got info right here. I can, I can show info for different albums, right, real quick. Or I can switch, let me close that, I can switch straight to the camera. If I tap that action item, we're going to go straight to the camera and it will let me take a pic. So good stuff, right? Well, I'll show you another implementation. Notice again, in the browser, we only have this one menu, right? Um, I'm going to show you another implementation. Let's see. Let's go to Android Market. And you'll notice in Android Market, you have this menu as well, My Apps and Search. And if you go to, say, Music, you'll have yet another changed action bar. Let's see. Let's go to Gmail, actually. 
and you'll have even more. So you have this menu right here for more settings, but you can refresh, make a quick uh, compose a new uh, email or search emails right up from this action bar. So that's the new, this, this action bar area replaces the menu uh, um, button altogether essentially because it's context aware. Although older apps will, like I said, pull up this menu button down here. Um, it's kind of confusing. I don't like it, but you know, this is a first gen. So we've seen uh, Android market, we've seen the home screen, we've seen the home screen customizer, we've seen the apps tray, right? We've seen, and sorry, home screen customizer right there. We've seen multitasking bar, the multitasking bar right here. We've also seen how the home button works, the action bar. You can also search the, search Google straight from the home screen. You can even do uh, a uh, voice search here, right? We're not going to do that. Um, and what else? Oh, well, the notification area. The notification area down here is where you get all your uh, at-a-glance information real quick. If you notice, you'll see time, uh, you'll see uh, your connection status, your signal strength, your battery battery life. Tap it and you get a more detailed view, including the, the Wi-Fi network you're connected to, but you also get a uh, view of all your notifications. So, notifications happen in two ways. Notif you can tap individual notifications like so, and just get information on individual notifications, or you can expand the notification area and then uh, drill down and see what triggered the notification. Well, this, this email just triggered that notification, right? And to actually get rid of them, you can tap here and hit that X, or you can expand the, the, the notification area and then tap X to get rid of that notification. And of course, here's a quick access to quick settings like airplane mode, Wi-Fi, screen brightness, or if you want more settings, you hit settings and you go into the settings menu. I seem to have screwed that up, but there you go. So now you know what I mean. Now, so we have, we've taken a look at pretty much all of the UI I want to show you. We've taken a look at Android uh, Market, Gmail, the browser, um, okay, the camera app. We, it's sitting on top of something, so you won't get a picture, but here's the UI. Um, you can switch cameras. See, I can, I can use the front-facing camera. That's what the front-facing camera looks like. I can use the back-facing camera. I could switch video modes, right? And all settings are right here. There's no uh, action bar in this app. Um, you have your autofocus, your white balance, your your color effects, your scene modes, and more settings right here that you can um, that you can uh, pick through. And of course, zoom and all that stuff. You see the zoom level right there. Um, good stuff. And of course, preview. If you want preview, you just go back there, like so, of your of your images. And notice in the preview, we're in the gallery now, so we have more contacts to wear actions right here. We have those menu uh, actions right there. Or you can trash this picture, you can share this picture on Picasso Bluetooth Gmail, or you can play the slideshow like so. We're going to just exit that. Um, hit the left top corner. Nope, that doesn't work. I'm just going to go home. And of course, from the home screen, you can access all different kinds of cool stuff. And I want to show you real quick, there's Movie Studio. Let's you, let's you mess with movies. You know, it's kind of, this is your, this is your time scale. You can expand and all that stuff. I won't get too much into that unless you're really into making movies. That's not going to really do it for you. Um, and I want to show you YouTube. We're going to go to YouTube. And uh, the thing about all these apps is notice this curved 3D uh, video wall. This is, uh, this is some of the, this is just a preview of, uh, this is just a taste of the uh, 3D elements strewn, scattered throughout uh, Honeycomb. Um, notice it curves. It's really cool. Awesome, right? Well, I can view a video and the cool thing is uh, Android Honeycomb uses these things called fragments. They're really just areas of the app. We have this pane right here for v uh, related videos. We have this pane right here, right, for comments and video information. We have this pane right here for actually watching the video. And the cool thing is, they're all interactable. So you can mess with comments, you can like, dislike, you can share, you can look at related videos and leave a comment even, right, and all this stuff while you're watching the video. But when you turn the orientation, Everything adjusts, and you don't. You, you still get access to all the same. You get access to all the same content in a different form factor, um, because the panes are modular. In other words, the fragments can reorient themselves to 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 optimize itself for whichever uh, viewing angle your your viewing perspective you're in at the moment. And notice more context aware stuff right there. I just can't stress that enough. That is the way to get around honeycomb. Um, so that's a quick look at uh, YouTube and music. Let's take a look at the music. Ah, well, thanks to the dual core Tegra 2 processor, thanks thank, made by NVIDIA. Look at that scrolling, super smooth. Album art cover renders instantly, right? There's no lag. You can just you can just keep on flicking, and the faster you flick, the faster it goes. Now, um, you can play it right from here. So this was the last. Uh, this was the last right here. That was the last song I was playing. I'm just gonna play it right like so. 
It's going to start playing. I can scrub real quick, right? I can scrub it to there. Now, what's the cool thing is I can add this song to a playlist but just by tapping that button right here. I can drill down and find more related songs. This is a cool feature because it'll find, it'll go through your album, it'll go through your songs and find more songs. But notice, when I hit the end of the list, the whole thing is more 3D effects. It kind of tilts to let me know that I've hit the end of the list. When I go to the top, it tilts the other way. So more 3D effects, very, very cool stuff there. And that, so that, that, that was the music app, and it's playing in the background. And notice there are the little headphones right here. Well, if I tap those headphones, it'll tell me playing information. I could pause, I can go to the next track, right, like so. Or if I expand it, I could tap on that and expand it and really just um, listen to what I want to listen to, like so. Good stuff, right? And like I said, you can use, you can go back like this with the navigation button or you can tap the top left corner to go back. That's, that's the, that's the navigation, um, metaphor now. So that's, uh, hopefully that, that'll give you a better idea of what Android 3.0 Honeycomb looks like on the Motorola Zoom. That's a quick little look at Android Honeycomb.